The women's tennis singles medals have officially been awarded in Tokyo. Alina Svitolina claiming bronze, Marketa von Josefa taking silver, and Belinda Benches winning the gold. Before I get into both of the women's matches, I want to first go over the opening match on center court between Pablo Crenio Busta and Novak Djokovic. After suffering that tough loss to Zvera of less than 24 hours, Djokovic once again took the court and was quite the heavy favorite. People are already saying that he'd be going for the bronze slam in New York. Novak had a solid start, having two break point opportunities in Krenja Busta's opening service game, but was unable to capitalize. After holding, Novak had yet another chance to get the break lead at 2-1, but Pablo fought it off well with a solid 1-2 play. Getting out of that hole only helped Krenja Busta settle in even more, as he then broke the serve at love for a 3-2 lead. He continued his solid serving the following two service games and had two set points at 5-3. Djokovic saved them and then had two break chances when Busta served for it in the 10th game. Continuing that trend of clutchness, Pablo elevated his game when his back was against the wall, winning the first set in 49 minutes. Novak of course wouldn't go down without a fight and began steamrolling on his serve in the second set. Pablo also did well to back up his serve as neither player allowed break chances. This of course meant the set would be decided with a tie break. Djokovic pounced to a 4-1 lead before Krenja Busta claimed the next 5 of 6 points for match point. However, this time it was Novak's turn to come up with the goods as he won the final 3 points of the breaker to even it at one set apiece. With the momentum fully behind Novak, it looked like he just pushed through to the bronze, but Pablo had other plans. The 60 raised his level and intensity and the decider, and broke Novak in the Serbs opening service game and route to a 3-love lead. After that third game, by the way, Novak completely unleashed his emotions, taking out all of his anger on the net slash racket. For the remainder of the match, things will remain on serve and on his 6th match point, Pablo sees the deal 6-4-6-7-6-3 for the biggest win of his career. Pablo's reaction was so great to see, first him falling on the court after match point, then when he soaks it all in in the chair. This is so, so deserved by Pablo. He's had an amazing career that's honestly been undervalued and underappreciated. Like I said previously, this is the biggest moment of his career. He's been playing the best tennis of his life the past few seasons, reaching another US Open semi, winning his biggest career title last week in Hamburg, and now an Olympic medal. During his post-match on-court interview, you could truly see how much this meant to him, as he was fighting back tears when speaking about this incredible achievement. I know Novak is disappointed to go home empty-handed because this was quite an investment coming to play Tokyo after the mentally and physically taxing year that he's had. Djokovic took both losses this tournament very hard because he takes great pride in representing his country. His quest for gold is completely over though as he did confirm that he'll play the 2024 games in Paris. Now Novak did have an opportunity to at least take the bronze in mixed doubles alongside countrywoman Nina Stojanovic but he withdrew due to a left shoulder injury. Novak reportedly said that the multiple injuries he's dealing with might potentially put his US Open appearance in danger. People were not happy at all with Novak's withdrawal from the mixed doubles because apparently Novak robbed Nina of a huge medal opportunity. Honestly, watching people's reactions to Novak's mixed doubles withdrawal was disturbing. It truly was. It's, it was disturbing. They do, they do some disturbing things just for the views, just for the money. Hey, that ain't what's up, man, but it's People are attacking this man and really degrading his character behind all of this, which is really, really showing. People already despised him and they're just looking for something to attack him for. Yes, this is disappointing for Nina, but with the physical and psychological toll of the past few days, I feel like it's completely understandable for Novak to not play. There's a reason why Novak pulled out, whether it be emotionally, physically, or both. He knew that he wouldn't have given his best to Soyanovich and they would have likely lost regardless. Once again, this is a shame for Nina because she played so great throughout the event and actually kind of carried the pair. It is important to note that this was not a shoot in medal for the serves by the way. Novak and Nina would have had to play Ash Barty and John Pierce who are very formidable. Djokovic also would have had to play the mixed doubles match 90 minutes after that 3 hour battle versus Krenja Busta as well. Then too he played a lot of that match in the heat of the day as he did with his previous matches this whole week. One of the first three slams of the year is a lot, especially on the men's side with their being best of five. In all honesty, he shouldn't have even played mixed doubles or even this entire event with the jam-packed scheduling, but he did it anyways. The tournament should have held the bronze medal match the same day as the gold men's medal match, but alas. Also, it's important to note that pretty much all the people dragging Novak are people who have and will never play anywhere close to that demanding level of tennis, so honestly, their opinions lack depth and validity. It's also sick too that these false narratives are being spread about Novak with people completely making up lies and false quotes in regards to the Simone Biles situation. 
I understand you not liking a player with some of their actions, but showing this much prejudice is truly disappointing and a call for. Anyways, now that that rant is over, I want to talk about the women's results. Fourth seeded Alina Svanalina made history as the first Ukrainian to win an Olympics tennis medal after fighting back to beat Alina Rybakina 1-6-7-6-6-4. Like in her semifinal match with Bencic, Rybakina was really the better player throughout most of the match, but her game wavered in the pressure moments. Rybakina stormed out to a 6-1-3-2 lead up a break, but dropped serve despite multiple game points. At 5 all in the second set tiebreak, Rybakina had an easy put away volley but flubbed it and ultimately lost the set. Still, Elena regrouped and had a 3-love 4-15 advantage in the decider. The Kazakh Steining was unable to break there but still held serve to go up 4-1. That would be the last game Rybakina would win in this match as Elena broke her twice more to serve forward at 5-4. That 10th game was so nervy as Fidelina tried to let Rybakina back in the match, waving away 6 match points, but the Kazakh Steining just wouldn't take them. Finally, on her 7th opportunity, Elena took the match for a historic win. Like with Pablo, you can tell just how much meddling meant to Svitolina, and even though I did say that Rabakina choked, she deserved this 100%. Svitolina battled and just was too strong throughout. The women's doubles bronze medal match was eerily similar to the singles edition as third place winners Laura Pigosi and Luisa Stefani saved match points and route to claim the first Olympic tennis medals for their country, Brazil. From 5-9 down of a deciding 10-point tiebreaker, Pigosi and Stefani defeated Elena Visnina and Veronica Kudermetova 4-6-6-4-11-9. I really feel for the Russian pair, Kudermetova especially. In the women and doubles final, they have multiple match points and opportunities, but once again, thanks great in part to Best Nita, they couldn't get the job done. Once again, seeing the reactions of both women and also their Brazilian supporters was amazing to see. Now, finally discussing the last match of the day and most important one, the women's final between Belinda Benchic and Marketa Van Drosova. The opening set was a complete slugfest that ended with Belinda taking it 7-5 in 59 minutes. The second saw quite a different story as Marquette rebounded nicely and started being much more aggressive, improving her depth. She broke benches twice to win the set 6-2. Now like the first, the third set was very back and forth. Marquette opened the decider with a break of serve and despite having game points to consolidate, she then dropped serve to level the match at one apiece. Then while 2-1 up, Belinda broke Marquette at love for the break lead before Von Josefa got her right back to put us back on serve. At 3 y'all, Belinda managed to save off her break point to remain ahead. She then took a medical timeout for a toe issue which kind of shifted the momentum even more in her favor. After the break, Marquette came out very flat and had her serve broken at love. When Benjit served forward at 5-3, Marquette did have 3 break points which Belinda staved off with some solid play. Then on her second opportunity, she was able to close off the biggest win of her career. Belinda is the first Swiss women singles gold medalist, but she made sure to acknowledge compared Fitter and Hingus during her interviews. This is surely the biggest moment of her career, saying afterwards, For me, this is the biggest thing ever for an athlete, so I cannot believe I have two medals and one of them is gold and one of them is to be decided. Yes, Belinda is also in the gold medal match for doubles alongside Victoria Goyevich as the two will score off against top seeds Krachikova and Senyakova. This is a huge deal for both Marquetta and Belinda for obvious reasons, but also because they weren't expected at all to do this well. Both have been struggling with wrist injuries actually after their first big breakthroughs and haven't had the best seasons thus far. Marquetta actually wasn't even supposed to play in the Olympics, but she used her protected ranking to get ahead of the higher ranked Karolina Muhova. She got quite a bit of flack for that, but she made sure to make it worth it and went all the way to the silver. Then Belinda had a very tough drive all the way. She drew Jessica Pegula in the first round, played both French Open finalists from this year, then had battles with Rubakana and now Van Josefa. Belinda's had the pressure of being Switzerland's next great women's champion and hasn't really had that big result until now. We'll see if that propels her to do greater things on the tour. Nonetheless, congratulations Belinda and all the other medalists on a great week or so of tennis. That's it for this video and let me know in the comments what you think about this incredible day of tennis in Tokyo, plus the Djokovic drama in the comment section below. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post a recap of tomorrow's action. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.